Um, so I'll start off with the case. Um, so I saw a 63-year-old lady with small cell lung cancer um, that was metastatic, currently undergoing chemotherapy with a cisplatin, who was admitted um, after she was found at an outside hospital to have a new brain mass. Um, so in the emergency room, she was also found to have hypocalcemia and hypomagnesemia, which is why we were consulted. Um, so she wasn't really able to provide much history, um, but she did describe um, hand cramping and also perioral, uh, but denied, so excuse me, denied perioral numbness or tingling. Um, so past medical history, um, just the small cell lung cancer on chemo. She'd been receiving this for the past eight months and she'd received her last session one week prior to presentation. Um, she was a smoker, no family history of calcium disorders, and she was on some medications. Um, also of note, she had been prescribed magnesium, calcium, and calcitriol um, about a week or two before, but she wasn't taking them. On exam, um, it was just notable for some tachycardia. Um, in general, she appeared just very chronically ill, um, although she was extremely comfortable. And then I just want to point you out um, her positive schwastics and Trousseau signs. Um, so moving on to her labs, um, her initial labs in the emergency room were significant for a low potassium, um, creatinine 1.2, very low um, calcium of 4.2, and a mag of 0.5. Her albumin was 3.6. Um, after obtaining the labs from the um, other hospital, um, we see that a week and a half ago, she had normal low normal potassium, um, normal renal function, low normal calcium, and low magnesium. Okay. Oh, and also her EKG showed a QTC of 523. Um, so we basically started a calcium infusion. We gave her oral calcium trial and calcium carbonate, asked them to give her um, IV magnesium and replete her potassium. Um, and so this just shows her um, evolution pretty quickly um, to um, normal um, uh, labs or electrolytes. Um, but I want to draw your attention to this interesting pattern of um, while her calcium increased, um, her PTH somewhat paradoxically also increased. So why did this happen? Um, I'm going to start off first by talking about that low magnesium level. Um, so magnesium in the steady state, um, as we all know, is very well controlled by the kidneys. Um, so in low magnesium states, the kidneys can really hang on to a lot of magnesium. And there's a wide differential for low magnesium, and I'm going to point out to you medication. So presumably for us, um, in the setting of cisplatin, um, she was having uh, magnesium from this um, cisplatin, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, so cisplatin nephrotoxicity. Um, cisplatin is a very commonly used chemotherapy, um, and a many um, oops, excuse me among the many side effects. Sorry, we see um, that nephrotoxicity is there, and that's actually the dose limiting factor. Um, cisplatin um, causes nephrotoxicity by directly damaging the renal tubules, um, and it can lead to progressive um, renal impairment, um, which can become irreversible. Um, so how does cisplatin lead to hypomagnesemia? Um, so there's no current exact um, explanation for how this um, happens, but um, we've seen in rat studies and also then in humans um, that um, there is tubular necrosis at the sites of um, tubular reabsorption of magnesium. So um, in the ascending um, loop of Henle, where about 70% of magnesium is reabsorbed, we can see like patches of tubular necrosis. And then also at the distal convoluting tubule, um, where about 15% of the magnesium is reabsorbed. Um, cisplatin administration also um, can lead to increased urinary uh, magnesium excretion um, despite severe hypomagnesemia. Um, and then the relationship of hypomagnesemia to cisplatin appears to be dose related as in total cumulative uh, dose over time. Um, so Dr. Shulsky and his colleagues um, looked at, um, retrospectively, um, 44 patients um, with, um, um, that were on cisplatin, and of those, more than half of them actually developed hypomagnesemia, only of which two were symptomatic, um, and then two of those 23 patients developed inappropriate renal magnesium wasting. Um, they were able to look at seven prospective patients receiving cisplatin therapy, of which two developed hypomagnesemia, and then also inappropriate urine um, magnesium losses, which we see here. So this is um, 
this first box, the top box is patient A and the bottom box is patient B. Um, and as you can see, the line here represents um, the serum magnesium levels and then each bar represents the urine magnesium. So over time with each cycle of therapy, as despite having um, uh, decreasing magnesium in the serum, um, th there was increased urine magnesium losses. Um, so now we kind of understand, um, oh sorry, and then they came up to this conclusion that cisplatin can induce a renal tubular defect in magnesium conservation leading to hypo hypomagnesemia. Um, so now we can see um, potentially why cisplatin causes hypomagnesemia, but how does that then lead to hypocalcemia? So there seems to be two mechanisms for this, and we kind of briefly talked about this earlier on the course, but I just found this very fascinating um, and also very relevant to my patients. So I wanted to discuss it a little bit more in depthly. Um, so the two mechanisms that um, have been explained so far are one, reversible PTH unresponsiveness, and two, impaired release of PTH. So I just thought I would talk about some of the studies that kind of led us to these mechanisms. Um, so Dr. Estep and his colleagues um, looked at 21 patients with alcoholism and um, um, hypocalcemia and hypomagnesemia. And um, they gave these patients parathyroid extract to determine what would happen. And so interestingly, um, the patients divided themselves into those that were sensitive to parathyroid extract and then those who were resistant. Um, so in the sensitive group that you can see that after they received the parathyroid hormone, um, their serum calciums um, normalized, their urine hydroxyproline as a marker of bone resorption also increased. So their um, bones are responding to the, PT, uh, the parathyroid extract, and then their percent of, um, of um, resorption, tubular resorption of phosphate, as we've already learned about, um, decreased appropriately. Um, so their kidneys were also responding to the parathyroid hormone. However, when we look at the subset of patients that were resistant to the parathyroid extract, um, we see essentially no change in their serum calcium. Their kidneys didn't, or their, their bones didn't respond to um, the PTH, and their kidneys did not respond either. So the question was, why was this happening? Um, why was there this differentiation between these two groups? Um, and when they looked at the two groups separately, they saw that first of all, the PTH sensitive groups had a little bit higher calcium than the PTH resistant, um, but then quite markedly, there was a difference in their serum magnesium with the resistant group having a much lower um, magnesium level. Um, so they came up with this new hypothesis. So could the hypocalcemia in the PTH resistant group be secondary to target organ resistance to PTH in the setting of hypomagnesemia? And then um, very beautifully, they um, designed another experiment. Um, so where they gave the patients um, that were resistant to parathyroid extract magnesium. So first I would like you guys to look at these circles. Um, so these represent the um, initial data that we already saw in the patients before they received magnesium. So once again, after parathyroid extract, you don't see an improvement in calcium, you don't see an improvement in their um, bone resorption, and then you don't see an improvement in their, um, in their phosphate excretion. However, after three days of IV magnesium, already before the parathyroid extract, you already see an improvement in their calcium. After given um, the parathyroid extract, um, they responded beautifully as expected to parathyroid hormone. Um, and also their um, bones responded appropriately and their kidneys responded appropriately. Um, so they concluded that the effects of PTH and calcium phosphorus, first of all, are magnesium dependent, and that correction of the hypomagnesemia results in elevation of serum calcium and reverses this, um, this end organ unresponsiveness to PTH. Um, but that wasn't the whole story. Um, so there are, um, um, it was noticed in the literature and in um, patients at that time that there were also patients that had um, very low levels of PTH um, despite having low calcium and low magnesium. So it just, it wasn't the fact that they were not responding to the PTH they were making, but for some reason there wasn't enough PTH available to them um, to try to increase their calcium. Um, so Dr. Anst um, looked, um, wanted to evaluate the temporal relationship between serum magnesium concentration and PTH release um, in one of their patients with magnesium deficiency from um, malabsorption that was associated with hypocalcemia and also inappropriately low levels of serum um, PTH. So their question was, 
if um, um, is the reason why they don't have PTH um, in their serum, is that because it's already been preformed but can't be released without magnesium, or is the problem that it, um, our bodies need magnesium to produce um, PTH? So they gave um, this young lady um, um, magnesium, and as you can see, before the magnesium was given, as represented here in this dotted line, her PTH was um, very, very low, and as soon as she re received the magnesium, in a minute, her PTH doubled. In two minutes, it increased sixfold. Um, so there is this huge, massive um, response to um, this magnesium. Um, so therefore, they, were, they concluded um, that this rapid increase after the magnesium infusion suggested that the PTH had already been formed, but it couldn't be secreted. So there needed to be magnesium in order to release the PTH. Um, so in conclusion, um, today we've seen that um, cisplatin nephrotoxicity can lead to hypomagnesemia and that hypomagnesemia can lead to hypocalcemia via two mechanisms, one being reversal PTH unresponsiveness and then two impaired release of PTH. So thank you. Any questions? Very nice. Yeah. That's really